All right, I'm sure people that keep following the community tab where I've been posting whatever new decks that I've been cooking up to play for uh, locals have seen me play a list very similar to this, but uh, I wanted to share it to kind of go over my thoughts, the deck's construction, how it ended up, where it is, and why this has been one of the most fun decks that I've been playing since the start of the set. So this is Warriors of Light Opus 20, but this is a very different Warriors of Light than what you'll see someone like Sam Tool running because this is a Refia control list. The star of the show is not just get the four colors for Warrior of Light while running like a Ferris and a Forward Lunith. This is a deck that is fully dedicated to getting Warriors of Light as a tribal and making that the focus of the show. And I'll be honest, this deck has actually really surprised me with how good it is in this set. Um, I didn't expect that. I remember I messed with a similar list out of Japan last set, and I remember thinking, this list is really cool, but it dies to aggro every time. And I keep coming back to this card now, and I'm throwing Shinryu in all those decks that kept dying to aggro, and it just makes all of them better. So the core of the deck is you want to get three Warrior of Light backups. We have four down before we use Refia. And Refia with three Warrior of Light backups means that Refia plus any Warrior of Light forward with a dull ability allows us to proactively draw while uh, creating pressure for our opponent. So if we don't get the four Warrior of Light forwards, we can still proactively use our backups, use an action ability on a forward, and then draw a card before moving to combat. And Refia still allows us to dig through our deck and dig through our deck and dig through our deck. So she's not just generating CP, she's generating card draw. And when she does that, she'll generate 3 CP and a draw. She essentially becomes better than free, and while also facilitating this really, really potent removal engine. She's basically a Warrior of Light, but better once you get set up in this deck. And she makes Warrior of Light better, which is even cooler. So let's do the card by card. Um, so the first thing that's a little scary with this deck, and it's probably the hardest part of this deck, None of the backups search each other directly. There is no Sarah in this deck, there's no Norstalin, there's no Rydia, there's no nothing. You want to get your backups in this deck, you're going to have to work for them a little bit. Um, so, starting off, we have one copy of Cosmos. This is a four-color deck in almost every sense of the word. Um, weirdly, this deck does not struggle against Chaos Arc as badly as I thought it would. I thought that would be an auto-loss, but that's been about a 50-50 matchup. Uh, the deck is just so explosive when it decides to finally go off that it's actually hard to time the chaos into the deck, and the chaos tends to slow the deck, the opponent down while playing. Uh, we have three copies of Lunith. Lunith is the best backup in the deck. It's the backup that you always search with your Bosch if you don't have him already. Uh, he allows you to pay one and tap himself to give a Warrior of Light, a thousand power, and haste. This is everything for the deck. That allows you to tap your Warrior of Light backups into a Refia trigger, it allows you to give something like your Lena haste so that Lena can revive something and then get activated again. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, we have two copies of Ingus. This is the less good Lunith, um, but it is a 2 CP Earth backup that happens to have Job Warrior of Light and the ability to tap himself. Occasionally you'll have one extra CP when before going to combat. You can just tap him Give a Warrior of Light a thousand power and brave because why not? And then that's your extra one for Rafia. Three full copies of Kryle. Um, she does double duty in this deck, both as a Warrior of Light, actually triple duty, as a Warrior of Light backup that also recurs all of our power summons, and our copies of Ferris and Lena. These are all very important jobs that she is doing, both as an EX burst and as a backup that you actually play. She is probably the last backup that you search out of the deck unless you really want a player to get back a Ferris or a specific summon. Uh, our last Warrior of Light backup is Sarah FFL, which is probably the most awkward card to play. Uh, the water count on the list is not especially high, and she does require 6 CP, so you go very minus on preserving hand knowledge when you play Sarah if she's your first backup. Um, and she searches for two Warrior of Lights when you play her and then you can sack her to activate a forward. Generally, you're not doing that. Um, once you play Sarah, you want her to stick around, but it does come up where you want to like double Warrior of Light on your opponent's turn, and Sarah lets you do it, albeit in a pretty expensive way. Um, of note, by the way, Sarah does not let say you have to search for different cards. So one of the most common things you'll do with Sarah is search two copies of Warrior of Light, 
as a way of color fixing your next two backups. So Sarah with a Lunath and Ingus actually does represent the ability to play all of them without drawing the right cards next. And while casting Warrior of Light is something we can do in this deck, there's a lot of ways to get him in that don't involve casting him, so we're okay with that. Um, lastly, we have our Busted EX and Desperation backups in Thordan and Tyro. These are very important cards for the deck because they, Thordan allows us to get our Cosmos a little early. It's a great EX burst. And Tyro for Bosch gets us our Lunath. So you can kind of use that to kind of to build out your backups, and they also help you to cast Warrior of Light, uh, Thordan by guaranteeing Cosmos, and Tyro by just being the wind backup for the deck. Uh, probably the next easy thing to talk about is the summons. Uh, we have three, two copies of Kusith, two copies of Mist Dragon, three copies of Amaterasu, and two copies of Hecaton Cheer. This is a very slow deck, so the Hecatons are fine. We're generally just trying to outlast aggro. Hecaton can handle a lot of the littler stuff, and then Shinri can come in to mop up some bigger things later on. The Mist Dragons and Amaterasu's are just the best summons in the game, and the Kusits allow us to repeat our plays because we're actually on a pretty low forward count. Uh, this is a combo deck, probably something closer to a Cloud Pod. It's like a hybrid of like Cloud Pod and like <laughs> Earthwind for lack of a better term. Uh, a lot of very interesting combos and things you're looking to do as you're playing the deck. So Kusith allows us to repeat those rather than look for new things to be doing, which is nice. Uh, as for the forwards, we're going to get the non-Warriors of Light out of the way. Uh, three full copies of Shinryu as an anti-aggro tool. Also, it can be a combo piece and get us our Cosmos or our Lunith or just whatever we're missing. And three full copies of Bosch. Uh, Bosch is admittedly a little scary to play into aggro, but Bosch does allow Tyro to represent getting either the Lunith or the Ingus or the Cryle that you're missing, and for that reason alone, running him at three is definitely probably worth it. Which brings us to the, oh, uh, I guess the last non-Warrior of Light forward is Firion. Uh, Firion gets pretty big pretty quickly in this deck, helps us to color fix our Earth and our Fire, and... Generally, this deck wants a 2-drop card to revive with Lena. I'll get to why later. That Inferion has haste and just good effects all around. It's just a good card. Uh, one of the best cards you could revive with Lena. Um, we had this at 3 for a long time, ended up dropping it for the third Thornton. Uh, for the forwards, we're on two copies of 1-drop Soul from Opus 12. This is a card that a lot of people have not ever read. So if you have a Warrior of Light other than himself, he gains haste, and if he performs a party in the tax, you can search for a Warrior of Light forward of cost two or more and add it to your hand. This is phenomenal. It's another way of searching a backup in the deck. It's another Warrior of Light for Refia that does not cost a lot of CP to get into play. Uh, it does so much for the deck. Um, jokingly at locals, I call him Soul Bad Guy, but he really does everything. Uh, usually my Sarah search targets, I'll get a copy of Warrior of Light and a copy of Soul, with the logic being that uh, fire is a more important element to search out, and there's the potential for soul partying with something like a Bosch later on, or a Ferris, in order to really get the uh, backups going in the deck if I have to. Uh, one copy of Opus, I think this is Opus 7? Opus 7 Dusk. Uh, if you control a Warrior of Light other than Dusk, you draw a card, and you can use him as an action ability. You can tap him to reduce the cost of your next summon by one. The ability to reduce your summon by one is negligible. negligible. It does not matter in the slightest. What does matter is that he is a Warrior of Light that costs effectively one CP that draw that also has a tap ability. You can use him, tap him, then use Ruffy to activate him and your three backups to draw a card. Uh, he is just good enough for this slot. Uh, three, one copy of Lena. This is kind of the heart and soul of the deck outside of the obvious Ferris and Rafia. So when she enters the field, she gets a counter for every backup you control, and then you can remove counters and tap her to uh, revive a forward in your break zone. Um, this has been a card that's had potential for a long time, but was considered kind of too slow. Lunath giving her haste removes the slowness of the card. Um, she oftentimes w says revive a 3-drop and revive a 2-drop on the turn she enters. Uh, most commonly, you'll try to revive something like a Refia or a Ferris, and then a copy of Firion or a copy of Soul. 
fantastic card. Um, definitely worth the light tax for the deck, especially paired with the Shinryu and the Cosmos. You will brick in this deck on occasion due to the light cards, I'm sorry, but you have to run this card, and you have to run the three Shinryu, and you probably have to run the Cosmos. I guess the Cosmos is technically optional if you want to run the third Ingus or something, but you probably want to run the Cosmos. Uh, three copies of Ferris. So Ferris is a card that disappointed me for a long time until I started playing this deck. I've never liked this card as the forward ferris Lunith combo. I never thought that that did enough for the deck slots it required. Um, but in this deck, because you're okay taking early damage, she is a rota for every single card in the deck just about. She is a removal engine. She's really obnoxious. She punishes your opponent for removing Urefia. She is just very, very good. This is the deck that, re that Ferris was made for. Uh, two copies of Ark. This is an EX burst that draws a card. It's also another Warrior of Light. And it allows us to make our forwards very, very large when we have the big Warrior of Light on field. Or I suppose if you have everybody else on field and a copy of Lena, he can also do the thing. Uh, lastly, we have three copies of Warrior of Light. This card needs no introduction. It's incredible. And then the three copies of the best card in the deck, which is Refia. So at the beginning of your attack phase during each of your turns, activate all the draw warrior fight you control. When four or more are activated by this effect, you draw a card. You do this every single turn. Refia generates 3 CP, 6 CP, 9 CP, draws a card every turn. She's incredible. She is essentially... Um, she's just the best. She's incredible. Like, ugh, full stop. Uh, second effect, you can dole four Warriors of Lights to choose a forward your opponent controls, put on top or bottom. This is also insane. Uh, it allows you to essentially stack your opponent's deck, lock them out of the game. This deck's late game is incredible due to the fact that Refia generates so much CP and so much removal that your opponent has no choice but to kill you before you get to the, the end game state. I, I've gotten to the point where my opponent has Chaos Arc and Refia just says, put that on top. Uh, take the, uh, the the best one you're leaving open. Sure, the Ferris and the Ref here are dead, but I have enough to rebuild from here. Ungodly powerful card. Um, and she is the reason the deck is running so many Warrior Light back foot, despite not being able to search the end. So, as always, let's go ahead. We're going to go into the Play This Deck feature in FF decks. And this is a tricky deck to pilot, I'm not going to lie. There are some bad hands you're going to have to play out of. Um, this hand... Would be okay on a mulligan, but we can do better. So we're going to mulligan. We did find our Lunith and our Cosmos, which is great. Unfortunately, we also found a Lena. First turn, we found a Thordin. That's kind of nice. I'm going to say Amaterasu for our Cosmos is probably our best first play. Uh, we'll do the Heka for that. Keep the Yamat. Uh, start turn. Okay, so we can go Lunith for our Lunith here. And I can pitch the Amaterasu in that for the Thordin. I don't know that I want to do that. So let's let's say that I do. Uh, we're going to go that and that for our Thordin. And Thordin is going to go search our copy of Ingus. So we have a play for next turn. Uh, we have a Kryle and an Ingus. That seems decent. So let's go ahead and drop the Ingus. And hopefully this is the turn we can pop off. Okay, so I'm going to say we're on damage... Excuse me, damage 3 here. And let's see exactly how far we can get. So I want to get the... Hmm. It's a tricky one. Okay, uh, so we're going to go... The Ingus for Ferris. Ooh, I just realized I need to get our Kryl into play as well. So I'm going to go that and that for that. I'm going to go one, two, three for Ferris. Uh, 1,000 to everybody. I'm going to say I'm on damage three. So I'm going to search a copy of my Refia. Uh, I'm going to go tap one, discard my Refia to play my Lena. And I'm going to give my Lena haste, and remove three counters to revive, uh, or to give my Lena haste, revive my Refia. I'm going to move to combat. Uh, Refia will activate 
for Warrior's Light and draw me a card. Sarah is not ideal here because I do have a breakable backup. Um, I can here. I don't have a two drop forward to revive with the Lena either. So probably what I can do is I can spend two to give the Ferris haste if I want a removal there, or I can use Refia's ability to spin a card. Um, let's go one more turn, see what I draw. Warrior of Light, don't mind if I do. Uh, I can also, while I'm at it, just go ahead and give the Re the Ferris a thousand power and brave. And I think we have learned about as much as we can from this hand. Uh, probably at this point, I would go ahead and cast the Shinryu for one, two, three, four, five. Play your Shinryu down. Go get a copy of um, Soul. Wouldn't be horrible here. Firion probably seems pretty choice as well. Just try to put some damage pressure on, try to end the game quickly. Uh, tap the two backups, play our Firion. Uh, we can do uh, Lena removing zero counters uh, so that we get our draw, or we can use our Warrior of Light to ping something off. Uh, that's going to activate all of our backups and draw a card. Sadly, not a low cost forward. I was actually thinking I should have given Ingus haste or brave to Lena so Lena could attack and spend her counter to revive a one drop if I could draw one after Mist Dragoning. Uh, let's go one more new game. Uh, so again, this deck is very slow, but that's okay. It's expected. Um, this hand has two backups, so we will be keeping it. First turn. Uh, I have to pitch the Bosch, unfortunately, and we'll go rid of the Ark for our Kryle. Uh, actually, we're not going to pitch the Ark. We're going to pitch our Amaterasu for our Kryl, get back our Amat, and we're going to hold. So right here, I can go Kryl, this, and probably the Refia for our Thornton, and let's go ahead and also play our, another Arc, our Lunith out of the deck. Uh, that's great. That's a Bosch. Uh, we can go this. Yeah, this and this to play our Bosch. We'll take a point of damage. Uh, it is a copy of Ingus. Well, we're going to get the other one right here. That gets us to four backups, which is great. We have our three Warrior of Light backups. We are good to start doing things. Um... Let's say that we go 1, 2 for Shinryu, and then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we're going to wipe the field here. Alright, it's got to be something pretty nice off the top. Soul is close. Uh, we don't have a way of hasting him unless we discard the Amat. We also can't party him in with the Shinryu. So this probably is a turn we just hold. Maybe we use our Amaterasu. Let our Shinryu do a bit of our work for us. Okay, we have a Firion. Let's drop those. Swing our Firion, get our draw. So we're still doing okay. Still playing defense. We are still playing defense. Let's get our draw off of Firion at the start of this turn. Ferris is perfect. So we can go this and this for the Ferris, do a bunch of damage to everybody. This will get our Lena. Uh, we can't get Lena because we have a light character on field. Uh, we're going to get a Refia. And we can do this and this for our Refia. Refia then allows us to... Um, have a removal on our opponent's turn, and one more turn seems decent enough. All right. The sand is very strange. I think you have to mulligan that. 
first turn. We do have an Ingus. We'll go Kusith for our Ingus. And then no water card. That's unfortunate. Uh, this and our soul for our Bosch. Go ahead and pitch the Ferris as well to get our Lunith into play. Hopefully we top deck a water card for our Sarah this turn. We did. Unfortunately we also top decked the Tyro, which is a really nice draw. So I think we have to lose the Amat and the Refia. We'll play the Sarah. Sarah is going to get us a copy of Warrior of Light. And a copy of Warrior of Light. So right here. Okay. Two, three. For Tyro, discarding a Warrior of Light. Let's go get our full action slate online with a copy of uh, Refia. All right, let's go start turn. Um, oh, part of me wants to get the Cryl down before I do that, but I think instead we go one for you, play you to activate and draw a card. Okay, let's go one, two, three for her. Actually, let's do one, two, three. Four. For Lena, let's give the Lena haste. Revive Ferris, Ferris search our deck for a copy of Soul, and do one, two, three, four pockets, add Warrior of Light to that, play our Soul down, uh, actually we can do this to stack our opponent's deck before we get to combat if we don't use the Warrior of Light ping. Go to combat, Refia activates all of our Warriors of Light. and draws us a card, which is fantastic. Um, so here I have five counters for the Lena, so I can go into the break zone and revive a two drop if I have one. I don't have one, because I haven't drawn a Furion yet. But that is A-OK, -okay. we are off to the races regardless. Um, I can give Ferris haste, do another cleave, keep the four Warriors of Light, one, two, three, four, five even. So I can swing Warrior of Light, do that, or I can party the soul to go search another Warrior of Light out of the deck. Might even do that. Just party these two, search, just to draw another card. Do one, two, three, four, five pockets, and still have a Refia from my opponent's turn. You see how explosive this gets very quickly. Uh, hopefully you guys all learned something from that. Let me know if you have any thoughts, comments, ways you improve the deck, but Give it a shot, pull it up, trust me, this deck is as fun as it sounds, uh, and yeah, I will see y'all in the next one.